Just some freaks, soul leper seats. Hotel suites, that's on the beat. Wesley Gray, aka Slim City was born in San Antonio, Texas on September the 13th, 1986. He was born uh, to Ronnie Gray, and before he was born, he's the oldest child, he uh, lost a sister and a brother. So when he came into the world, he was a gift from God to us. Uh, being born in San Antonio, Texas, and being the first child of mine and his dad's child, only one with him, he was given a lot of attention by his grandmother there, Miss Osa Gilliam and Willie Gilliam. He was the prize of our lives. Uh, as he grew up, he grew up with a father who had an addiction to alcohol and drugs. Uh, also a mother, myself, who had an addiction to drugs. He lost his father at an early age, at the age of two. And we moved back to Charlotte, North Carolina. When we moved back to Charlotte, North Carolina, he stayed with his grandmother, Merle White. And Merle White took care of him and his baby sister until about the age of 13, about the age of 13, 14. Times and bad times, you know, like, um, it was a lot of family, a lot of, a lot of cousins, a lot of, a lot of, um, friends, um, a lot of food, a lot of soul food, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of my grandmother raising me, um. During that time, I was in and out of the house. Uh, I suffered from addiction. Well, my, my uh, grandmother, she's really um, been in my life since I was small. Uh, my, my father passed away, and you know, my mother, uh, my mother, she was a, she was an addict uh, growing up. You know, all 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 through childhood. So, with her time in the streets, actually in prison. You know, some well, I, I want to say most of the time, but a lot of time, and you know, and like actually, she was actually in prison. You know, and. Actually, when I walked the 12th grade stage, that's where she was at in prison. When I walked the uh, graduation stage, she was actually in prison, so. Uh, I had completed my college education, but got mixed up in drugs with, with a gentleman, and it took me outside of the house almost all the time. So they were primarily raised by their grandmother until they got in their teenage years. Once they got in their teenage years, and I came back home, but when I got back home, once he was playing the drums in the church, I noticed his interest for music at that time. Uh, it's your boy Slim City, man. I'm checking in from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, we live. As y'all can see, we got the beautiful downtown area and up in the background. Uh, Slim City, uh, well, well, my first rap name was actually Skywalker. They named me S Hot. Um, a, couple, a couple cats I was dealing with. Um, we were trying to get my foot in the door. Charlotte, uh, we uh, the uh, nickname Charlotte is Queen City, so I kind of like mixed it together to my own brand as a uh, Slim Slim City, and uh, dollars and cents that kind of came along with uh, just looking at the S and the C, so I just I just uh, made a dollar sign and a cent uh, sign, and that just turned into uh, Slim Slim City. You know, this is school I started off at right here, West Charlotte, In high school pretty much. I was pretty much a I was a good kid, but I was but I was quick tempered. Um, I was quiet. Uh, I was really, you know, just didn't really talk to too many people. You know, I was the kind of person like if you got to know me, then you know I might be one of the, one of your best friends or like you know one of the coolest dudes you met or you know something something like that. No, Wesley has always been quiet, but if you tick him off, it's like something you never want to do is make Wesley mad. It's real bad. He's just quiet. I don't know if it's from our childhood growing up or if it's just a part of his personality. And that's because, uh, you know, I, I, I just be, sometimes I just be in my own world. You know, I, um, I just, you know, think about um, music most of the time or, uh, you know, growing up, uh, you know, I, I was just, I was a quiet, I was just a quiet dude. Um, but I was also I had a, but I also had a crazy side, you know, like a uh, off the wall side, like really not a, not really giving a damn type, you know, attitude of. Uh, and uh, my uh, homie, his name was uh, Pac Man. That's what we call him, Pac Man. And now uh, he had long, he had long braids, and like all the, all the girls, they called him Bow Wow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was uh, selling selling candy, 
and uh, he would have like bags of Skittles and you know things like that. And um, and he uh, and um, he uh was making beats. And I went to his house one day. And I didn't really know he made beats until I until I like got in his room and everything. We was chilling and. And he uh, just pulled up this uh, program on a computer. It's called Fruit Loops. The first time I met Slim, we clicked. You know, we got up. Everybody, we actually started rapping. That's how it actually got happening. You know what I'm saying? I rapped a little bit. Uh, Slim rap, of course. Obviously doing what he do. Holding it down, doing his thing. Shout out to Slim Carolina Blue all day. Yeah, the way, the way I met Slim, right? We both live on the west side. You know what I'm saying? We, we grew up on on the west side on Baddest Ford or whatever. I ain't, you know, I ain't meet him till I was like, I wanna say 13, 14. Cause when my mother would have meetings to go to, stuff like that, or uh, other obligations, after school I had to go to the Y. I met him at the YMCA over there, you know what I'm saying? We used to shoot hoops and play basketball or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And it just went forward from there. Like, you know, I'm kind of proud to be, you know, from here, you know, we got everything, you know, we got African food, um, man, we got, uh, what, gyro, you know, we got, we got really everything you can think of, you know, mix, mix, I'm on Burger King, um, Mickey, Soul Food, uh, Angie's, you know, we really got any kind of food you can think of on the floor, and, um, and that's, like, really one of my favorite parts about staying on Betty's Four Road, is, you know, you know, the, you, know the, you know the good food, you know what I'm saying, you know the stores, you know everybody, you know all my friends from Baby's Foot Road, and, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, just a, just a cool, just a cool place to be, you know what I'm saying, like, I know reason like your doors, you go to the stores, you know what I'm saying, like, everything is everything, you know what I'm saying. As far as the music um, that I hear in Charlotte, um, I hear a lot of talent, like I said, a lot of, a lot of potential, um, I don't really hear too much, too much garbage music from uh, artists in Charlotte. That's why I kind of feel like, um, like uh, no one really gets the opportunity to really shine. Um, I guess it's kind of, uh, kind of a, kind of a thing. I, I, I guess it's kind of a, kind of a thing that we got, a, a kind of a, a battle that we got within our own, within our own city. You know, um, it's like as soon as us uh, somebody tries to, um, you know, come up and. Um, Get a get a little bit of, uh, they, and they uh, try to get noticed. Then like uh, everybody comes out, try to try to pull pull them, pull them back down to where they at. So I just feel like music uh, is kind of it's kind of good, but it's kind of depressing at times. You know, just 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 the uh, just from just just the hope level um, that that uh, I know a lot of artists experience, um, and I do sometimes. You know, just kind of feeling like you know. Um, just you know, a, a little, a little doubt about you know, am I gonna really uh, be be where, where I want to be? You know, not where um, as far as the fans and the supporters, not where they want me to be, but where I want to be as as a, as a as an artist, as a uh, entertainer, and you know, as you know, just basically trying to um, let everybody know that you know it's not it's, you know it's not just. Uh, not just something I do, just to you know try to try to look good or you know try to try to uh, gain popularity. You know, it's just it's like it's like a, uh, it's like really a passion that that I have. You know that that I want to share. And, you know, and I want to uh, let everybody experience. You know, you know everybody uh, let everybody get that get that feeling that I feel when I listen to my own music. You know, uh, let them feel them chills. You know, you know what I'm saying? It was pretty cool. He was my older brother. We were more like twins than anything. Whatever he did, I would want to do. We fought a lot. My grandmother raised us. Uh, my mom was in and out, but still in all, that didn't change the way we felt about her. She came home when we were about maybe 13, 14, still in and out. Um, but Wesley, as a brother, I mean, he, he, he was always in love with music. I remember when he would just go into the closet. He made his own studio. So what he would do is he would take a microphone, lace it up in the closet with speakers, go in there and shut the door, record his music, and he was always a big fan of doing beats. That's what he loved to do. His, be his The best thing I think that he does is his beats. He's a very good producer to me. In my first memory, a slim man was like shh, a high school man, like in ninth grade, like soon we like got in the same math class together, dog. Like we just smashed, like homie, like it was like, it was like kid and play. <laughs> you know? 
Uh, many times I would see Wesley uh, in my addiction uh, when I was out and he would come looking for me. My son was very attached to me so he would come looking for me and I would kind of hide and, and I'm not I'm not ashamed of my past. I don't want, wish to shut the door on it but it has made me who I am today. So as he grew up and he got in high school he had a lot of rebellion in him. Uh, well, he had a lot of rebellion because of his childhood, not knowing his dad, mom being in and out of the house, and grandmother raising him. And that, I believe that took him into the music realm, the music uh, outlet, because it allowed him a, an avenue to express himself in words. As uh, far as music is concerned, as far as Slim, man, I think it's like real hot, it's different. You know what I'm saying? It can change like a lot of stuff, man. Like as far as where you want to go, about like, creativity. You know what I'm saying? As far as how much you want to put in, what how much you want to do. But to me, I think it's like great music, man. Something I always can bump to. It's like a different mood. You know what I'm saying? For every mood swing you in, like he got that kind of music. He did. <laughs> I got shit that my own family tried to steal. Rich nigga shit. Toilet paper. Overseas. Pockets full of bar paper. Pass the key look. Girl, let the key look. What you do, do about a waterfall? After the weed make love, I ain't got a call. Papa Tylenol. The city never sleeps. We on the island, dog. You just on the beach. Sip ever clear. When the weather clear. Family tried to steal. Rich nigga shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, of course, that's the first thing I look at when you're cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's the song called? Get busy. Too busy. If I'm working, right, or I get a good idea of a song or a theme for a song, I pretty much take out my iPhone and jot it down right then, right there, and I also make beats too, so if I have a good idea for a beat, I'll hum it to myself, and then I'll put, you know, pull out my phone again and record it on my iPhone, you know what I mean? Uh, and once I got back in Wesley's life, I began to try to hone that craft in him. I began to try to give him an example that he could look up to. Many times I tried to make up for time lost and I realized that I could never make up for the time that was lost with him. I just could pick up and move forward. So I encouraged him to go to school but his interest was always music. He went to graphic arts. He's an excellent artist. Uh, he, had, he has many talents but his passion is music. Uh, school was basically, I guess, you know people say, you know, school is for some people and some, and for some it isn't. But I, I just think it really isn't for me right now, it isn't for me, but I do plan on going back to school, but I guess, you know, when that time comes, I'll probably be, you know, a couple years in the game, so uh, I, I just, I just try to uh, focus on music, but, I think when I did go to school though, uh, I think it was like really basically the same thing. Like, you know, like the, the same thing that's, that, that it's kind of always been like when I attended school, like, you know, I kind of didn't do my homework. And, you know, I know I should be doing like, you know, doing my assignments and stuff, but I guess, you know, it's like a part of me is saying like, it's, you know, it's a part of me wanting to do something else. And, uh, you know, just, just to do something that's gonna, you know, that's gonna make me happy, you know? So I sent him, I got a, uh, a manager to come up from Atlanta to listen to some of his music. Once he listened to some of it, he told me he should copyright some. He has some music copyright written uh, that I have uh, supported him in. I also tried to get him a contract uh, with Benjamin Brothers, but after reading that contract and taking it to a lawyer, found out that it wasn't in his best interest. So he wanted to be an independent artist. Today, Wesley is still Many times he, he gets frustrated, he gets discouraged because his music isn't where he wants it to be. But my experience, strength and hope in Wesley's life is ne never give up on your dream. Well, music is um, number one, to, to me it's number one and everything else really just, just falls into place. So um, sometimes it's hard as far as trying to trying to get other people you know to um as far as finding like my own little team my own little crew to you know to to you know help me because you know i definitely can't do do, do this but uh 
by myself. Like that's and that's how it's like usually been like me just um, trying to get my own shows and you know booking my own shows and booking my own studio time and you know going this place and that place. You know trying to uh, get my song heard um, on the uh, radio and uh, meeting meeting new uh, well net net networking with new people and things like that. You know that kind of um, makes me. Um, stressful uh stressed out at times but um besides that you know i just i try to have a good time when i um when i uh, get into the booth man we'll introduce to y'all a couple of my friends <laughs> yeah i ain't got kind of i'm gonna give them all the taste test you know what i'm saying y'all this for y'all you know what i'm saying i'm gonna let y'all know okay this that's like a peppermint type, you know. What's that cut? Yeah, like a peppermint type. I mean, it's good though. Hennessy, y'all know what this do. This right here is like, it's spicy. You know what I'm saying? This is the spicy shit. And last but not least, that hip no. This is the sweet shit. So, we got two blunts, three blunts here, Kush. This is the studio process, man. You know what I'm saying? This is just, you know, what we do, man. I got my, I got all my shit in my motherfucking phone, all my lyrics in my, in my phone. And I just try to keep it simple, you know what I'm saying? I try to, you know, keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, I make beats and shit, but I like listening to other people's beats. I think that's a new, I think it's a new hobby, you know what I'm saying? Rapping on other people's beats, you know what I'm saying? Because I come with a whole new swag, you know what I'm saying? That, like, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? It kind of surprised me sometimes, so. This shit finna go down, man, you know what I'm saying? We up in DJ Polo studio, man, you know what I'm saying? We finna go ahead and um take it to the other room. We is something that uh, we all need. And the thing is, in Charlotte, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put y'all up on game is, KB ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of KB. Because a nigga like me, mix a little bit of KB in, with a little bit of Kush, you know what I'm saying? And that's just how it is, but uh, you know, I've been smoking now since I was about 15 years old. And first time I smoked, you know what I'm saying? I really didn't get high. But uh, I was with my homies, we just smoking shit, you know, walking down the street. And, you know what I'm saying? Just smoking, but I really didn't get high until I was, I was in this, uh, like this abandoned type building. And I was with my partners. It was my, uh, well, actually my partner and my cousin, Eddie P. And we were smoking, basically, passing the blunt. And, and we were seeing who could take the biggest, the biggest pull on the blunt. So, so basically, we just hitting the blend. And I, and I think maybe I probably took the biggest pull because I remember I was counting the ones and I was counting when they was hitting the blend. But for me, I said, okay, let me then go on try to tap all this. I'm hit the blend all that I could. And here with all that smoke, man, it just tastes like, like, it's like, when, man, like the first time you smoke, it's like sometimes you might run across some weed that always got that taste that it's gonna remind you of the first time you smoke. And like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I might get that weed, but that's how it was. It, it just, it was this taste, like, it was so vivid, that taste. And when I held it, I just coughed. I, I just straight up just, just cough. You know what I'm saying? It was like, I, I guess it's normal, you know what I'm saying? So I really didn't feel it. I kind of felt smoke, smoke weed. And anything else, you know, I can't do. Um, I might drink a little bit, but also my father was an alcoholic, so you know, it, you know, it's always a, it's always a, um, I was a flash in my mind um, that you know that uh, makes me want to, um, you know, not really smoke weed and not really drink or do nothing because you know I don't want to, you know, I don't want to uh, be you know looked at like you know they were looked at by other people. As far as you know, um, following to those tracks, 
Um, I would say yes and no, but I know it wouldn't be as it wouldn't be as hazardous to um, to my family. Like if I were to have kids of my own, like you know, I wouldn't you know I wouldn't want any other kid to feel like how I feel, or you know. So I think that's um, it's, it's a definitely you know like a definitely a positive side to it. Um, so I know like if I were to have a kid, you know, like I like I probably you know I probably be like number one dad or something like that, but. I'm like a pretty, I'm a pretty good dude, you know, when it comes to uh, relationships and, and uh, women. And in general, I uh, try to, I try to treat them right. You know, I try to, try to buy them like stands, you know. Just, you know, show them, you know, show them, show them a different side to me, but I don't know. I don't, I don't really think women like that these days. Uh, so I, I just think it's how I view women now. Uh, it's just how I see them, you know. Some some women, you know, they some women they deserve respect, and some of them, you know, you just gotta. Some women, you just gotta, you know, give it to them the hard way. You know, uh, sometimes it just gotta be for. I just feel like it's, uh, if if you're gonna get in, get into a relationship, then uh, anything you do, bad or good, it has to be for 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 a better purpose. Um, and it has to be for you know, and it has to be for, and it has to be better, better for yourself. You know, you have to. I mean, you know, you gotta make, you gotta make better decisions for yourself. So I just feel like, um, you know, love. I mean, love is love. You know, I mean, I, I don't really, I, I, I don't really try to, I don't really try to um, go you been in love go. Before? Oh yeah, I, I mean, I've been in love before. I, um. Man, I've been in love. Actually, my 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 high school sweetheart type, my, my kind of like she was she was kind of like my high school sweetheart. You know, we uh we was we was together for a while. You know, on on and off. And um, I I had moved to Texas for a couple years. Texas, um, maybe a year after I graduated high school, uh, tried to go to college, and you know it really didn't work out. So, you know, it was kind of like a thing where um I would you know just be around the wrong people, um, be at the wrong place at the wrong time, you know, things like that. And I uh, messed around, got into some trouble. And um, and uh, I guess you could say, uh, you know, um, I guess you could say my uh, my life was threatened. Uh, I, got a, I got a phone call, you know, just uh, you know, just saying uh, somebody was like, yo, yo nigga, I'm gonna kill you, you know? And I just, you know, I had to, you know, I had to make that move, you know, just because, you know, just the time, you know, in this uh, area where, you know, it was a lot of, it was a lot of people, you know, um, there was a lot of, you know, young, young black African American men, you know, they were getting, uh, you know, kidnapped and stuff. And, um, shit, when I, when I got back, you know, we were supposed to have this, you know, magical fairy tale life together, but, you know, it just didn't work out. So, I think that was basically the, basically the turning point to where I, I started looking at, I started looking at it different and, you know, started looking at everything different, really, you know, started started wanting to I think I think I think that kind of made me want to want to do music even more uh, wanted me to grind grind harder you know after after you know just kind of like keep my mind off of off of losing her you know but um not to say like you know you know I didn't I didn't do anything bad or you know she didn't she didn't do anything bad you know it was just you know it was just something just just something that you know that you just it was something that affected me and I you know maybe it affected her you know I don't know but I mean I might I might you know we might we might get back together one day you know what I'm saying you never know but if not you know life life, uh, life goes on never give up on your dream because what I did uh, once I got my life back on track is I went back to school I have a engineering went to school for engineering at UNCC and found that that was not my passion so at today's date, I have a bachelor's degree in business management, a master's degree in business management with a concentration in human resources. I am a reverend associate pastor at Wilson Heights First Church of God. And at this time, I'm going for my second master's degree, and that is in a master's of degree in seminary uh, with the concentration in chaplaincy. So I want him to know that though at times, Things don't seem like they're getting where you want them to be. Just wait. Wait, keep the dream alive, and keep pressing. 
because I never thought in my life that I would end up where I was when I ended up out in the street doing things that I never thought I'd do. But today God has completely turned my life around. And the greatest gift of all that I have is to see my son still standing, still passionate about his dream. And many things he could have done in life because of what happened with his father, losing his father at an early age, his mom being addic addicted to drugs. But I am so proud of Wesley because Wesley has never ever been incarcerated. He's never been in trouble. He has no children, uh, so he's, he has his focus, he has his mind together, he has his head on straight. But it's just that right now, it's not, his music is not where he wants it to be. But I'm still believing, and I believe for him, that one day his dream will come to pass, just as mine did. His prayers will be answered, and he will reach the ultimate pit pinnacle of what it is he wants to do. I love my son Wesley. I support him 100% in everything he does, and I'm going to keep on helping him to keep his dream alive. Everybody doing their thing. Um, a couple of my favorite artists, uh, you know, people that been doing their thing for a while. I've been grinding for a minute. Uh, people like, you know, Betty Grind, uh, S Dub, Mr. 704, um, you know, um, Betty's World, D Blake, uh, Elevated J. Um, and my people, you know, Kid, uh, Michi, J. West, and ADP, you know what I'm saying? And this might be a few more, um, you know what I'm saying? But most of the artists that, you know, I just named, you know, I know most of them personally, so. This the King Carter and Betty Grind, um, Mo Diamonds, uh, Revenue Royalty, uh, it's a new, uh, Luke, that's a new artist, um, I'm feeling him. I call this dude on stage and everything, and you know, and like, people that like, you know, people play stupid, you know, act like they can't, you know, act like they can't comprehend, you know, something, something good going on down here. So, it's just little things like that just kind of like, you know, tick, uh, tick me off, you know, make me want to just go somewhere else, you know what I'm saying, and just make some new, uh, music for somebody else. I uh, feel like another gang on city, but, you know, I forever ride for Charlotte, you know what I'm saying, and um, I just hope, you know, that we just get past this, like, just this, just this negative energy that, that, you know, that people want to uh, always bring, you know, before they, before they try to make a name for themselves, you know, they try to, they try to make somebody else name bad, you know. The most important thing to me is, um, shit, it's really life in general, you know, just, just being grateful, you know, for, just for life period, you know what I'm saying, like, like, you know, not to really brag, but I, like, I could say, like, I really got everything I want, and plus more, and, you know, so it's really life is really the most important thing that I can that I can really, you know, in my family and you know, everything that comes just come with the package of life period, you know what I'm saying? Like